Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, I'll be going over how to reach empowered monoliths to get you faster into the end game and how to progress your corruption faster on your monoliths as well. So the first thing we're going to start off with is how to reach empowered monoliths as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So these right here are all the monoliths that you can go to. And you're going to start off right here in Follow the Outcasts. Now the way these work, if you're new to the game or if you don't know, is inside each of these monoliths there's a stability bar. Once that gets filled up to a certain point, you can fight the end boss for that specific monolith. Now there's two paths to reach uh, the end three and the reason you want to do this is because clearing Spirits of Fire, Last Rune, and Age of Winter in the normal monoliths lets you come over here to this stone and then that's how you unlock empowered monoliths which means the only thing you really need to do is clear these three but you can't do that off of the start so once you get here and once you i don't remember if it's right before you fight the boss or after you essentially get a choice to either unlock stolen lance or black sun now the thing you want to do is pick black sun and don't feel like if you're under level you should be going for this one or these are level 90 and you're like level 70 and so I, the normal monoliths are not that bad but essentially you're going to be going down the right path and this is the one that gives you the blessings for attack and defensive pro uh, sorry um offensive and defensive properties and then from there it'll make your life a little bit easier whereas going down the left path is not only longer, but it'll also only give you like loot uh, blessings. So once you get to fall, once you clear fall the outcast, you go to Black Sun. From Black Sun, you'll be going to Ending of the Storm, Reign of Dragons, and then from Reign of Dragons, these three are unlocked. And once you finish uh, Spirits of Fire, Last Ruin, and Age of Winter. Like I said, you come to this middle stone here, and then you unlock your empowered monoliths. Now, how do you progress corruption fast? So, for your main monolith, which is going to be the monolith that you're doing most of your farming in, for me it was Reign of Dragons, I also needed a chest piece, so I also did Blood, Frost, and Death. And I ended up doing Blood, Frost, and Death a bit more because... Um, Reign of Dragons, even though it dropped my weapon, it's also the one with the most necrotic resistance and it's the biggest pain in the ass because my build does necrotic damage. So going over to Blood, Frost, and Death. The loading screens are a little bit slow in this game, but that's okay. So. You'll see here, once you unlock Empowered Monoliths, you get to choose between Normal, which the area would be level 70, or Legendary, which is the Empowered uh, Monoliths, and it's level 100. So this is my highest uh, Corruption Monolith so far, and it's not overly high, it's at 218. But to progress Corruption, you need to fight these Shades of Orbis. And if you look down on the right there, it'll see the Corruption increase you get from killing the shade of orbis now for your main monolith what you want to do is get the stability up until the third quest it's going to be different for every single um monolith the higher tier obviously a little bit increase here and then you get to fight the boss fighting the boss in an empowered monolith gives you a gaze of orbis for each gaze of Orbis, you get 9 bonus corruption from actually killing the Shade of Orbis. So that first number, the plus 4 corruption, uh, I believe ranges between 4 and 7 or 9, I want to say. I believe it's 7, could be wrong. But essentially, um, getting all the way to a Shade of Orbis, fighting it with no gaze, will only just give you the 4 corruption. For each gaze of Orbis you do, uh, for each boss you do of that monolith, you will get 9 bonus corruption added when you defeat the Shade. 
Another thing to note is that um, if you have, for example, like I do, two gays of Orbis, and let's say I go fight the Shade of Orbis, and I die, or I lose that Monolith, um, your gaze of Orbis is gone. So be very, very careful when you go in and fight that, because otherwise you're only going to get the four corruption if you try a second time, or you're going to have to farm gaze of Orbis again in this corruption and try again in that one. Um, the best way to make sure you don't really die is be careful of the modifiers that you have running going into the Shade of Orbis fight. Uh, for example, some really bad ones are enemies has a chance to dodge. This isn't necessarily the worst, but it makes your fight take longer because that chance to dodge seems to be pretty, pretty high from what I've been able to see. So be very careful with that. Another one you want to maybe avoid is Mark of Death is not great either. Um, enemies having a rage at half health that can make their second part of the fight a lot more deadlier. And maybe the one where it says like they have frenzy and haste when um, when they get hit. So th these are typically modifiers you want to avoid when trying to push corruption. Make sure not to have them on here as much. But obviously all of them are bad to some degree. Like this resistances will make your fight take a little bit longer because now it's more resistant to your damage type. Uh, increased health will obviously make it take a bit longer. Damage modifiers will make it do a lot more damage. So if you're kind of on the edge, maybe um, make sure you get those modifiers off just by uh, doing other echoes in order for them to run out. Now, if you go to a new monolith, and this is why you want to like focus on your your main monolith to push that as high as faster before like really trying to push other ones if you can avoid it. So we'll go do the last rune here. And I also have two gaze of Orbis, so I should get another 18 bonus corruption. Now, because I haven't done this monolith at all or tried to progress it, there is a catch-up mechanic that's part of it. So as you see here, the same plus four corruption and 18 corruption from gaze of Orbis plus 31 bonus corruption on top of that just for this monolith being behind your main monolith if it's it's just it's the game's way of like letting you progress uh, a little bit quicker if you need multiple like pieces that you're target farming that way it's easier to get to that point because you can already clear that level of corruption you don't need to progress as slow <clears throat> so you always want to progress your main monolith and then you want to move on to another one if you can help it if you need multiple pieces of like unique gears for example or certain things from other monoliths you might have to progress two kind of at the same time or like progress one and then move on to another one even if it's not like that high in corruption to try and get the piece of gear that you're missing but that is pretty much it on how to progress your monolith corruption faster Anyways guys, if you haven't already done so, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more Last Epoch content, as well as any other future games that might be coming to this channel. Right now, Last Epoch is my main game, and I will be making mainly content for Last Epoch, because it's coming out in its full release on February 21st, 2024. And I believe that this is a very good game that has a very bright future ahead of it. And I think if you haven't already given it a shot, take a look at it. It's on Steam. I believe it's for $35 USD. A bit more or less, depending on where you live. And your specific currency type, of course. But definitely be sure to give, um, give it a look and see if it's for you. I personally enjoyed my time with it. The game has come a long way since its uh, initial release and early access, I believe four or five years ago. It's been a while. And the game developers have put in a lot of effort into making this a top tier ARPG. As always, guys, my social media information is in the video description below. If you want to talk to me, contact me in any way. You can join my Discord. Talk there. I have no problem. I love talking to people. I love talking about these games. And thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.